It can be a little bit of a minefield if you're looking to buy a set of motorbike trousers. There's a lot of different materials, different armour, different price points. So if I can clear a little bit of that up, I've got a variety of trousers here and I'll go through them and discuss some of the pros and cons and what you might be looking at if you're on the market. I always wear some kind of protective gear when I'm on the bike. Some people are happy to ride in normal jeans, but if you crash, they're gonna rip within like half a second. So at the minimum, you wanna wear something like a Kevlar line jean. Generally with Kevlar jeans, you're gonna sacrifice safety for comfort, looks, and convenience. These particular ones came with level two knee armor and pockets for hip armor. I already have some hip armor that fit in these, so I always wear them as well. Personally, I never ride without both knee and hip armor because if you're gonna crash, you're probably gonna hit both of those areas. So I always wanna be protected. If your jeans come with pockets but no armour in them, I always recommend to get level 2 armour because it's not much more bulky, it's about the same price and you might as well just go for the most protective stuff you can find. On these particular jeans, the pocket for the knee armour is at the front here as you can see. So when you get to where you're going, you can just reach down and pull the armour out without having to take the whole jeans off. And that makes these really convenient. So say if you're going to a friend's house or if you're going to work, once you get there, you can just reach down, take the armour out and they become basically normal jeans. It's not like that for the hip armour, but honestly the hip armour is so slim that you don't even notice you've got it on. I'm not sure how many jeans have this, but I'd really recommend looking for those front pockets if you can, because it just helps so much. I've turned these inside out to show you guys what it looks like on the inside. So here are the pockets for the hip armour. You can just reach down and put the armour in here, and that holds it in place. But more importantly, all this yellow stuff, this is all the Kevlar, and Kevlar is what's going to provide the abrasion resistance. You can see there's some areas that don't have Kevlar on, like the insides of the thighs here. And that's just to make the jeans a bit more lightweight, more breathable, and like I say, it's just a bit of a safety compromise to make them a bit more convenient to wear. So the area of the jeans without any Kevlar, like the inside of the thighs here, that's going to be no more protective than just wearing a normal pair of jeans. But at the same time, you're very unlikely to slide right on the middle of your thighs there, and I think you have a bit of a problem already if you are sliding there. And it's also true on the inside of the shin, so the knee is here, this is the inside of the shin. But again, the risk of you sliding here is pretty low, um, but it is a safety compromise. If you're looking to buy Kevlar jeans, turn them inside out like that and see which parts are actually lined. I'm not going to go too deep into the different safety ratings, but generally you've got single A, double A and triple A, where triple A is the most protective and single A is the least protective. As far as I can tell, these ones have an A rating, which is pretty good, but it means that I'll be using these for short and low risk journeys. Like I say, going to a friend's house to watch a film and I don't want to sit there for two hours wearing leather, I'll wear something like these Kevlar jeans. But for commuting to work, I'll definitely want something a little bit more protective than this, so I only really wear these for short journeys. And in terms of price, Kevlar jeans, generally they're going to be the worst value for money. Uh, I only paid £40 for these because they were on clearance, they're just old stock. But generally you're looking about £100 for a decent pair. And if you want a really protective pair, AA or AAA, you're going to be looking at probably two to £300. I would just straight up avoid all of the cheap, no-name Kevlar jeans that you find on eBay and things like that for 40 50 quid because a lot of the time you saw when I turned it inside out, they actually won't have that much Kevlar in it or the Kevlar that's in it is, is not going to be genuine stuff. So I'd say if you have a tight budget or you really want to prioritise um, safety over convenience and comfort, I'd say avoid the Kevlar jeans until you've built up more of a range of gear like I have. These are really useful, but I'd say they're more of a luxury item. So onto something that's pretty popular in the women's market, but not so much in the men's market, you're looking at armoured leggings. These are a really good option because they provide all of the looks and the style and the convenience of wearing the jeans, but a lot of the time they tend to be a little bit more protective. So these ones in particular, they were a lot more expensive, they cost me about £140 or something, but they are actually AAA rated, which is the same safety rating as my leathers. Um, and it's just awesome, these came with level 2 knee and hip armour, so they're really, really protective. The only thing I don't really like about these is they have this mesh lining on the inside and it's really nice once you're wearing them but it's just a pain to get on and off, my foot always gets caught in this and then try and take them off I just get all tangled up. So that's the only thing, they're really convenient once you're wearing them but trying to get them on and off is a little bit of a nightmare. They also fit very tight around the waist so you might find that uncomfortable if you have very wide hips. Um, it's better to try these things on or order from somewhere where you can return them pretty easily. A lot of what I said about the Kevlar jeans is also going to apply to things like Kevlar leggings. Turn them inside out, check where the Kevlar is. In this case, these have a really high safety rating, so I'm comfortable wearing these at higher speeds even. And they look very thick and they feel quite thick, but they are very, very breathable. So these are more of my summer option, or for times when I just want to look good and take some pictures and things. And if anyone's wondering, there's a lot of different options out there. These ones in particular are the Motorgirl Sherry leggings. I'm not sponsored by them, I paid for this with my own money, but just in case anyone wants the same ones. Now onto the most sensible, but probably the most boring options. You've just got a pair of textile trousers. These, they don't look very nice to be honest, um, but I would recommend that everybody start off with a pair of textile trousers. And the reason is they're just so convenient and they tend to be quite protective as well. 
So textile trousers tend to not look very nice. They tend to look a little bit bulky and a little bit ugly. But the good thing about that is it means you've got lots of space underneath these to layer other clothes underneath. So for example, in the summer, I'll wear a pair of sports leggings. In the winter, I'll wear a pair of fleece uh, lined leggings, thermal leggings. Or you can even just wear your office clothes under these. So once you get to work, you just take these off and you're already dressed. So it makes it really convenient. But yeah, the trade off, it's not going to look as nice. Also in terms of protection, most of these will come with knee and hip armour, or at least pockets for knee and hip armour. And like I said earlier, I'd always recommend just sticking both in and just getting the most protective ones you can. In terms of safety rating, you're going to be probably looking at a single A or a double A rating for textile trousers. You can get triple A rated ones, but they're a little bit rarer. So textile trousers are my go-to for times when I don't want to wear my Kevlar jeans, I want something a little bit more protective. But I'm not necessarily going out and riding super fast or riding on motorways or bends or anything. So I want something a little bit more convenient than leather. I also would include weather protection in the safety category. Textile trousers tend to be waterproof and you can get very high-end Gore-Tex ones which are completely waterproof. Um, but even a cheaper option, they tend to be at least water resistant. So these are going to keep you warm, they're going to keep you dry. They're just the most well-rounded set of gear that you can have, especially in UK weather. One thing to look for with textile trousers is something like this mesh vent. And especially you're going to find these on the ones that are branded more sort of adventure style. But pretty much when it gets hot, you can just sip this back and you expose a nice little bit of mesh underneath just to get some more airflow. It doesn't look like a lot, but it really does make a difference. Um, this has is, this is really saved the day for me. Other than that, the only other features you're really looking for with textile trousers are things like pockets, comfort, looks, um, pretty much just all the standard stuff. In terms of price, these are probably the best value for money, uh, as far as I can tell, in terms of protection, weather resistance, all of that stuff. That's why I recommend that everybody start out with these. You can save your money for things like Kevlar jeans when you have enough to buy something really high end rather than buying something cheap because even a cheap pair of textiles, they're going to protect you pretty well. And moving away from the most boring option to probably the most exciting option and that's a set of leather trousers. Leather, in my opinion, just looks the best. It looks awesome when you see someone in a set of leathers and they're going to be the most protective as well. These leathers in particular are perforated around the thigh, which makes them really useful in summer. And I tend to wear these on sort of warm but dry days. Because the problem with leather is once it gets wet, it's just awful to wear. It takes ages to dry out and it sort of shrinks the leather a little bit. So you want to avoid getting caught in the rain if you're wearing leathers. And the perforation also means that on really cold winter days, even if it's dry, I won't wear my leathers generally. I'll stick my textiles on, but these are really good in the summer. These ones in particular came with level 2 knee and hip armour and they also come with velcro on the front so you can stick some knee sliders on. So if you plan on going to the track or you just want to do a little bit of street rossy hooliganism, uh, these are good, you can stick the sliders on these. These ones in particular have a AAA safety rating so they're going to be some of the most protective gear you can get. In terms of price and value, levers tend to be a little bit more expensive than textile, but it's not too bad. You can definitely get a set of uh, budget levers. These are RST's um, GTCE set, which I mentioned in previous videos. And as far as I can tell, they're one of the best budget options. I paid about £100 or £150 or something for these ones um, about a year ago. They're holding up fine. Uh, I plan to get many more years out of these. So I'd say if you're on a budget and you really care about safety, it's probably going to be levers if you can stretch your budget for it. One thing to look for with levers is to get the matching jacket if possible. Or some brands will have belt loops and you can put a belt on them. But that's basically just so you can zip the jacket to the trousers. It means that in an accident, um, your jacket and your trousers, there's no risk of them separating and you, you know, scuffing up your hip or whatever. Um, also on a track, if you plan on doing a track day, you're going to need at least a, a 360 zip um, like these ones have. So that's something to look out for. And I know this video is about trousers, but just while we're here, um, one piece versus two piece, I'd say get a two piece for the street because it's just a lot more convenient. One day you might want to wear your leather trousers and your mesh jacket or something, so get a two piece set for the street. And the last thing I recommend grabbing along with all of this is just a cheap set of waterproof over trousers. Again, I've made a separate video on waterproof textiles versus waterproof overalls. But generally, these are going to mean that you can wear all of those options in all weathers as long as it's not too cold. They do look ridiculous, but they do a really good job, so... Maybe if you're trying to impress a girl or something, don't show up wearing these, but if you just want to stay dry, these do a really good job. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about motorbike trousers. There's a lot of different materials to suit different budgets, different wrist tolerances, different weathers even, so hopefully that clears a little bit of that up for you, and you can make a little bit more of an informed decision. Let me know in the comments if you want to know anything else, or if you want the names of any of these trousers, and in the meantime, safe riding, and I'll see you guys in the next one.